This week I would like to show you how to create this heart hands card. Um, it's quite simple, but it uses the auto trace or the image tracing feature of Scan and Cut. Now the first thing you're going to need to do is go to my blog, gentlemancrafter.com, find the corresponding blog post and download this picture. So we'll save it as, and we'll save it to the directory where you want to save it, wherever that may be. I've already got it, so I had to save it as. That's now downloaded, so I'm ready to use it. And now I'm going to switch across to Scan and Cut Canvas, log in and start a new project. OK, so here we are in Scan and Cut Canvas. And I'm going to start this with the image tracing feature. So I'm now going into that, choosing my file, which is where I saved it. Forgive the fact that it's blacked out at the moment. Unfortunately, my PC seems to be not recognizing PNGs. OK, so I've got it on outline mode at the moment. And when I click preview, I can see that I get a perfect outline outside, but not one inside. So I'm changing to color recognition mode. I've got that ground removal turned on and I'm reducing it to two colors. So that will be black and white. I've now got the perfect outline that I wanted. I don't want to import the image as well. So I'm going to click no here and it will just bring in the outline. There we go. Now it will import it in two parts because it's got the inside and the outside. So I'm going to delete part of that and just work with the main um, outline. I'm increasing it in size and just closing the shapes palette for now because I want to get as much of the screen in use as possible. Now, I'm not too keen on this um, rough edge on the inside, but the outside seems sort of OK. So I'm going to double click on it and I'm going to start getting rid of some of these nodes by dragging a selection box around them and clicking delete points. So that's got rid of those in the middle. I'll then take out a few of these on the outside that I don't need. I'm also going to get rid of the handles just for now so that I can see better what I'm doing. OK, I think that will do me. The rest of these should be OK. So there's my shape with the hands touching each other. Now what I'm going to do is bring in uh, a square, no, not a square, a heart first. I'm basically going to replace the one that was there with one from the shapes palette. I'm just going to tweak it around a bit until it looks about right. Now, nobody's got fingers that pointy, so I'm going to edit the outline of the heart as well by double clicking on it. And I'll zoom in so I can see what I'm doing. Now, the point of the heart has two nodes, so I'm spreading those apart. I'm turning the handles back on and I'm adding a point in between those two uh, nodes making sure that it's converted to being a curve because then I'll get the little handles to work with. And then I'm going to start tweaking and adjusting until I'm kind of happy with it. I'm not after perfect curves here because again, nobody's got perfectly curved fingers. So I'm just after the sort of rough look that you would get. I think I need to make that point a bit broader.
Okay, I think that's fine for the top one. Just need to have a play around with the bottom one as well. Okay, I think that's going to do me. Now what I'm going to do is select both of those shapes and from the overlap section choose subtract. That's now going to punch that heart through those um, joined hands and I'm just going to make some adjustments so I can see better on the screen the results of what I've got. Okay, so there's my hands with the heart shape in the middle. I'm going to reduce that in size though to just over four inches. I've typed in 4.15 if it's any help. Right, I'm just going to move that off to one side for now because I'm going to bring in another shape and that's the square. Uh, and I'm going to bring in three of those. The first one that I brought on, I'm going to change in size to four and a half. And the reason I chose the first one is it because it is because it will be further back in the stack. Second one is going to be four point two five, and the last one is going to be four. The two smaller ones I'm going to align over the top of each other and then I'm going to again use that subtract function and that will give me a, a frame with a hole in it. Then I'm going to select the frame and the hands, align them and then this time weld them. So I now have the frame with the hands in. Next task, I'm going to create an offset um, outline and I'm reducing it to about 0.12 inches, making sure that the um, inside gets an outline as well. Now it looks solid red there because I've got no line color selected. If I select it now, you can see it is there. And if I use edit and subtract, it will punch the inside from the outside. So there we go, I've got um, a mat or a layer. Now I'm gonna zoom in a little bit because I don't actually like the rounded edges that I get with that result. So I'm gonna actually delete the outside part. And you can see there, it kind of uh, leaves me with a group of things that I don't necessarily want. So I'll delete the other half as well. There we go. That's now done. Then what I'll do is I will select um, the inside bit and the larger frame, align them, and then again use that subtract function. That's now given me the mat for the main frame. I'll make sure to send that to the back so that when I align these next, they will actually sit on top of each other in the right order. There we go. So that's the main design element of the card created. Next up, I'll create the actual card. I'll start that with a square. And because I know the biggest um, frame uh, or shape from the top it is four and a half inches, I'm gonna set this square to be 10 inches by five inches. So that will give me a five inch by five inch square once it's folded. And once I've got that in place, I'll go to my path tool. There's a shortcut of P if you want to use that. Click, 
and then hold down the shift key and drag that line down and then double click to finish it off and then in the properties box for that shape I'll set it as a dashed line so that will score the card for me. Then I'll select both of those, make sure they're aligned correctly, so right in the centre, and then I'll press G to group them. That means that I can move them around together. Now I'll position everything on the mat so that when it cuts out, it'll cut them all individually. And of course, if you're using the same weight of cardstock, you can cut them all out in one pass as well. There we go, that's the designing done. So now I need to give it a name. And then I will save it into ScanCook Canvas. Excuse my bleeping going off. And then I'll start to download it as well. If you need to download to your computer, right click and choose save link as, and then you can save it to where you need to. I'm using the Wi-Fi function though, so I actually click on Wi-Fi transfer, and that's now done. And then what I've got is, I've actually cut this all from the same sheet of cardstock, but what I've done is I've actually colored in some of the cut layers with ink pads. So the red pepper I used on the thinner top layer, and then some hickory smoke and archival black for the shadow layer. What I've also done is I've masked off an area inside of that shadow layer because I want to ink in and give it some colour inside as well. So with that red pepper Adirondack, which uh, is a pigment ink, I'm actually using a paintbrush to paint that on. I've speeded this up a little bit, by the way, so you can see what's going on. I'm genuinely not this fast in real life. Um, but I'm basically creating um, like a vignette, a shaded area that will lead the eye into the middle of that design where the heart is. With um, a sponge tool, I've also started applying some distressing in the hickory smoke colour. And then to finish it, I'm just dabbing on some black archival into the corners, just to really make them a little bit darker. That's that done now. So what I'm going to do is get uh, some sponge applicators. These are eyeshadow sponge applicators, but they came in packs, large packs of many. So I thought I'll grab a few because they're great for applying little bits of ink. I'm just roughly marking out with pencil where that red heart will be in the middle. And then with my sponge applicator, I'm dabbing it into the ink pad and then just smearing it around in that section. Just double checking I'm not going places I don't want to. It's perfect, it's right where I need it to be. There we go. That works, doesn't it? Okay, I'll put the ink pad to one side and I'll actually keep this applicator because I can use it again for this colour, so I'll slip it back into the little packet. And time to see how I got on with this vignette. So I'll peel away the post-it notes and also the masking tape. Didn't quite look much when I was doing it, but it actually is quite intense when you, um, when you take away the masking tape. I think it's really good. Right, time to stick things down. So um, I'm just using an ordinary PVA glue. Obviously you can use whatever you've got.
There we go. Just making sure that's stuck down and now onto the main frame. Perfect. Right. Now, because I had that dashed score line on the card, that folds perfectly and easily. And there is the card all finished. And this obviously is what it looks like. Just want to say thank you very much for watching. It's been a pleasure having you company. Please don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it. And also don't forget to share it with your Scan and Cut friends. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel. And I'll look forward to seeing you again soon. If you'd like to see more from me, please do check out some of these great videos.